G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. I am the space person in my family. Obviously, I'm the astronomer. Like many of the people watching this channel, when someone sees some strange light in the sky or some dipshit testifies in Congress that they heard from a friend of a friend of a friend that they saw an alien, it's my phone that lights up like a Christmas tree. Yes, I have some thoughts on this and I have some insights as an astronomer, so let me bend your ear for a little while and tell you why I think these people have about as much credibility as a Reiki masseuse or an astrologer. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. I have a degree in astronomy and I spend most of my time taking high resolution deep space photos. And you're watching Star Stuff. This video is sponsored by a company that has science literally in their middle name. Well, actually at the end of their name, High Point Scientific. Unlike that UFO conference you attended to hear some poorly crafted fiction, High Point Scientific will actually sell you the gear you need to take high resolution photos of a UFO. Not that grainy blurry stuff that you usually fall for. If you're actually serious about proving that aliens exist, put your money where your mouth is and buy a proper telescope, camera, mount, get the gear that we use to actually look at space, and prove it. Go on, do it. You Recently, three military experts testified before Congress in this vague and unconvincing testimony that they'd heard from a friend or heard from someone else that they'd seen an alien or even that they'd seen something in, weird in the sky or whatever. And I've got to say, it's like secondhand, thirdhand, fourthhand information. It doesn't really ring true as evidence as such. Has the U.S. government become aware of actual evidence of extraterrestrial, otherwise unexplained forms of intelligence? And if so, when do you think this first occurred? Uh, I like to use the term non-human. I don't like to denote origin. It is funny, though, that this happens before Congress. I think it says much more about Congress than it does about this testimony. But why would they do such a thing? Why would they lie under oath? Why would they put their careers and their reputations on the line like this? Let me tell you about Louis Whitley Stryber. He was a writer born in 1945 who specialized in writing horror novels. He was inspired by Lovecraft's existential horror that touches deep fears in the reader. He wrote about vampires and werewolves that were even turned into movies, which were essentially box office failures and flopped despite their star-studded cast. After these failures, Whitley Stryber wrote a best-selling book called Communion. Now, this book was really interesting because all of a sudden it wasn't pitched as fiction or horror. It was pitched as non-fiction. And this book, Communion, was moved from the fiction section to the non-fiction section in bookstores with this really striking cover. Its cover was iconic and is seared into my brain. A beautiful oil painting portrait by Ted Seth Jacobs of the classic alien with almond-shaped eyes, an image which persists in popular culture today. I read that book cover to cover multiple times. As a 12-year-old boy, I fully took Whitley Stryber at his word. It didn't occur to me until years later that Whitley Stryber had essentially gamed the system. He'd gone viral in a time before the internet. He'd used this HP Lovecraftian existential horror but presented it as fact. And this is how mythology works. It presents itself as fact, not fiction. This is something HP Lovecraft would be proud of. In hindsight, it's obvious why he did this and his failing career as a horror author was suddenly pushed into the stratosphere as a successful alien abductee. Communion was the number one bestseller and an absolute hit. But what perhaps Whitley Stryber didn't anticipate, unless he's some kind of malevolent genius, is how sharply his career had to pivot. He was no longer the horror author. Now he was the alien guy. And he's well paid as a speaker on the UFO circuit. He's made a good deal of money off this reputation. But his actual work as a writer, as a fiction writer, has never really taken off. The point I'm trying to make here is not about Stryber. It's about UFO culture in America. Have you ever noticed that UFO sightings and news are really USA centric. Do the aliens recognize US exceptionalism as much as the Americans do? Why don't we see the same level of UFO fervor in North Korea or China? Why is it the country with the biggest and most successful UFO economy, the speaker's circuit, the culture, is the one that gets all the sightings? Let's look at a map of UFO sightings plotted by location. Oh my God, these aliens are racist. They hate Mexicans and Asians. How could this possibly be? What a strange coincidence that the sightings are all around the areas with the biggest thriving UFO conference scene. Did the UFOs cause the conferences? Or did the conferences 
cause the UFOs. Now look, most of the viewers on this channel are American and I wanna assure you, I'm not saying that Americans are dumb. My viewers particularly are extremely intelligent. We're all into astrophotography and science. So I'm talking to you guys, the Americans. You know what I'm talking about, right? You live with these people. You know what's up. Now at this point, there are people furiously typing in the comments about this sighting that they saw or this thing that they heard or these sightings here or this event there. And let me say this to you. It's not my responsibility to disprove your claim. It's your responsibility to prove your claim to the rest of us. Let me say that again in big letters. It's not my responsibility to disprove your claim. It's your responsibility to prove it. There are literally millions of explanations, terrestrial explanations for the things I hear about. And all I see when I see these photos and evidence, uh, fuzzy blobs and drones, and most likely objects that pilots are just tracking like birds in order to test their cool new tracking system on their fighter jets. The fact that anyone can't figure out what this fuzzy blob is does not automatically make it extraterrestrial. The US government, like all governments, are becoming increasingly concerned about foreign incursions into their airspace. That's why they have a UAP program to record, catalogue and hopefully identify where foreign governments are using modern technology to fly over. And surprise, surprise, this has all increased in frequency with the rise of drones. It's so expected and so unsurprising that it is utterly pedestrian. When the US government keeps this sort of research to themselves, the little green men community say, oh my gosh, there's a cover up. But the US government actually released this information and were quite candid about it. They released it in June 2021. The preliminary findings of their inquiries were very straightforward. It reads, UAP incidents fall into one of five potential explanatory categories, airborne clutter, natural atmospheric phenomena, US government or US industry developmental programs, foreign adversary systems, and a catch-all other bin. Now the little green men community love this little other bin, but even the report itself says that this other category is because of limited data. They just need more funding and more standardized tracking and reporting to be able to get their numbers up. It does, however, highlight the stigma involved with working this way and being an intelligent military civil servant in service to your country, tarred with the same brush as the little green men community. Do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Is it because they're trying to hide the truth? Or is it because you're really cringe and embarrassing? <gasps> oh, say good day to you this day of your time. How are you? Very good. Thank you so much for being here. It is our pleasure always to co-create these transmissions with each and every one of you. This same stigma affects the scientific community. There are legitimate programs like SETI and astrobiology which are looking for extraterrestrial life within the universe. They've struggled for legitimacy over the years and they have legitimacy now and they don't want to be associated with the little green men community. So when real and academically strong astronomer Avi Loeb started talking about extraterrestrials in 2018, he damaged his reputation and he damaged his story career. And if my science Twitter is anything to go by, he is widely derided in the scientific community. As Carl Sagan once said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. You like that? No member of the scientific community is closed off to new ideas. UFOs, physics that break Einstein's theory. I mean, you just have to look at the amount of time that was wasted on string theory to see that scientists and the academic community are willing to engage fervently in new ideas. But it all lives or dies by the evidence. Eventually, it has to bear fruit. If aliens have the technology to come here and send us a message, you would have to assume they have some understanding about technology in general. And we've had our big antennas pointed at the sky for 50 years, specifically looking for a signal. The lines of communication are open and we've heard nothing. G'day. Dylan from the future here in the editing room. Normally when a creator does this, come in during the edit because they need to fix something they've said wrong. I haven't said anything wrong. I think I'm going well so far. Now bear in mind that these guys are whistleblowers now. That means that not only are they possibly up for a payday on the UFO economy, the UFO circuit in America, the US government pays whistleblowers billions of dollars every year. Also, if you haven't watched Communion the movie, it's a terrible movie, but you need to get high and watch that movie just for Christopher Walken. I'm talking to you like you were real. Go to hell. Terrible. Can we 
talk this over. Anyway, that's my rant. I hope you enjoyed. I just made this video to package up into a nice little link that I can send to the next person who asks me about little green men. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff. I take photos of space and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff and remember, my dog sees things that aren't there, just like UFO little green men people.